Hello, and thank you for choosing DynasOne Systems. The following video is designed to help you identify each component of the DynasOne, demonstrate the fitting process, and provide a general review of the treatment protocol. Please remember that just as each animal is unique, so is each treatment. This video is only a guide and should not replace the assistance of your DynasOne consultant. Thank you for choosing DynasOne Systems, where we hope to stretch beyond your expectations. The equine carpal flexion dynasplint provides support to the soft tissues of the limb while pushing the knee forward. Over time, these tissues will tighten, leaving the knee at its normal position. Your dynasplint system will arrive fully padded and labeled ready to apply to the animal. In your box, you will find photographs, written fitting instructions, a treatment schedule that your dynasplint sales consultant has designed specifically for your animal, additional padding that will be necessary throughout the treatment process, a screwdriver used to adjust the tension throughout the duration of the treatment. You'll also find a FedEx prepaid label. Please save this label as well as a box as you will need them when you and your consultant have decided that your animal's treatment is complete. Before applying the DynaSplint system, please speak with your sales consultant about adding a wrap underneath a splint. Wrapping is not always necessary, but since each horse is unique, wrapping can sometimes prevent further complications. Hold the DynaSplint system up to the horse's leg to check the length of the proximal and distal struts. The cam, wrapped with the padding, should be lined up with the middle of the knee. The distal struts should extend as far down the cannon bone without coming in direct contact with the fetlock. It can lie close as long as the padding and the strut itself are not rubbing or causing irritation. The proximal struts will extend as far up the radius and should fall right below the large muscle on the forearm. To adjust the length of the struts, you will find set screws covered with electrical tape or a pull pin and lock adjustment on the proximal and distal struts. First remove and save the electrical tape. Loosen the set screw by turning to the left. Only a few turns is needed so it doesn't fall out. Slide the tubes within each other to the desired lengths and then tighten. Using the electrical tape, recover the screw. This will ensure the screws do not walk out. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. Some DynaSplint systems have a pull pin and lock adjustment. Simply pull and move the tubes to the desired position until they click in place. Your DynaSplint consultant has labeled the cuffs front top, front bottom, back top, and back bottom. Please follow these labels when applying the DynaSplint to your animal. Begin by opening the front top and front bottom cuffs, leaving the back cuffs and straps closed. Next. Bring the splint around the back of the leg, lining the top wing pads up with either side of the radius while also lining the cam up with the middle of the knee. Tighten the front top cuff first, feeding it through the D-wire and pulling it as tight as possible. Then, tighten the back top cuff. This will ensure the splint is tight and will not slide as you go to tighten the bottom of the splint. Pull the distal strut toward the cannon bone, lining the strut and wing pads up on both sides. You will be working against the tension on the splint and will feel the spring resisting as you pull. Once the distal struts and wing pads have been lined up on either side of the cannon bone, loop the front bottom cuff through the D-wire and pull snug. Then, tighten the back bottom cuff by feeding it through the D-wire and pulling snug. Next, go back over each cuff and pull them snug once more. This will ensure the splint is pulled as tight as possible. Finally, Tighten all four Velcro tabs on the butterfly strap located behind the knee. Once again, make sure these tabs are pulled as snug as possible. Wrap the duct tape around the top and bottom cuffs to prevent the splint from slipping and discourage chewing. To remove the splint, cut the duct tape, making sure not to cut any straps or cuffs. Then, undo the front top and front bottom cuffs. Once the splint has been removed, be sure to fasten all the Velcro straps in order to maintain proper orientation. Your DynaSplint consultant has preset the initial tension on your horse's splint. Most carpal laxity cases do not require a high tension setting. Normal tension setting for these cases is anywhere between 0 and 3. You should aim to see the knee slightly bent after the splint has been applied. Some horses require a little more or less tension. If and only if the individualized treatment schedule calls for increasing the tension, it is done in the following manner. Insert the silver screwdriver into the hollow end of the distal strut. To increase the tension, 
turn the screwdriver to the right, remember, righty tighty. And to decrease the tension, turn the screwdriver to the left, remember, lefty loosey. Because the Dynasplint system is a bilateral tensioning device, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. The window with the red or blue scales on the distal strut shows the tensioning setting. Be sure they match. The carpal flexion Dynasplint must be worn 24 hours a day in order to provide adequate support to the tendons and ligaments. The horse must be stalled when wearing the Dynasplint system. Please follow the treatment schedule your Dynasplint consultant has included in the box. If your Dynasplint consultant has recommended adding a wrap under the splint, please do so before splinting. This wrap should be removed along with the splint on a daily basis. It is very important that you check the leg on a daily basis. This can be done by running your hand up and down the leg feeling for signs of irritation or swelling. Finally, if there are any signs of soreness or stiffness that persist longer than 15 to 20 minutes, please contact your Dynasplint consultant.